eh, y quizás no, no, él lo haya explicado, yo no lo entendí, mm, pero me gustaría... I would like to eh, go back to something that you probably said. Eh, eh, hablamos de que había habido... En, We said, you said that in your action plan, you had studied the life cycle of the product. But from the environmental point of view, that is one thing. I would like to know what happened from the point of view of job generation. Is there an inventory or an analysis as to jobs? Because if you take the step of banning something, that may have an impact on the creation or the disappearance of certain jobs. Well, that's, that is always the excuse we hear from the industry. That's the excuse we hear from those who um, make nuclear weapons and who have nuclear weapon plants in uh, places in the United States where they don't want those plants to shut down because that means jobs. It also means jobs in the automobile manufacturing plants that uh, certainly build cars that pollute the environment because their companies have uh, worked on Washington to lessen the pollution controls. But they don't want the plants to shut down because that means their jobs. The same with the paper mills, the pulp mills. They don't want the pulp mills to shut down after they overforested uh, the uh, the forest, the redwood forest in Northern California, because it meant jobs, but now the forests have been compromised. So as it relates to the plastics industry, sure it means jobs, but there has to be a conversion. Any time that I think that we have uh, become fixated on a certain level of our economic performance at the expense of the environment, then we're not being I think, sensible about how sensible that economic environmental output is. So the example that we're using here was on military-based conversion. When in the 1980s and the 1990s, we began to reduce the size of our military by shutting military bases, the concerns throughout the United States was, what do you do through the peace dividend of those who are looking for another job? because many were arguing, don't shut military bases down, it means jobs. Don't shut automobile plants down, because it means jobs. Don't shut down a pulp mill, because it means jobs. We cannot be held hostage to this nexus, because there's a new nexus. And the new nexus is one that's enterprising from a green perspective. We believe that we can then supplant with green jobs the kind of workforce that is healthier to the environment and that is certainly more sustainable on a longevity level towards a green economy. But the green economy has to be sort, supported by corporate interest. And corporate interest has to understand that conversion means investment. So when we talk about reducing the plastic bag, virgin plastic bag levels, then we should be encouraging the establishment of the potato starch or corn starch plastic bag companies. That, for an example, would be job generation. When we're talking about reducing our fossil fuel reliance, there should be in return the production and the resurgence of the solar industry or the wind or turbine industry or the geo or biomass industry. So for everything that we're talking about that might have some threat to jobs, which we're extremely sensitive to, the alternative is that government and private sector needs to work together for developing the alternative industry so it's not job loss, but it's job conversion. And we have strong history in showing that job conversion can work, but what's critical to the nexus of job conversion is the fact that both government and public and private sector must work together for the education of that job conversion sector. This is why we're pushing hard on the green jobs area. And the green jobs, we're now moving law so that people who are in poverty, I mean, we have poverty here in San Francisco, everybody has their share of poverty. 
there are areas of jobs that are being established. We are now trying to make sure that people in these communities are first in line to get the job training and the job placement so that we are addressing poverty at the same time. The green jobs is not meant to be just getting to those who already have a job, but those who haven't been employed at the same time. And in terms of job loss in the plastics industry, this is an argument that they're using, and this is a failing argument. At the level of the environment, the benefits of this change are unquestionable. You have explained them very clearly. My question is, who pays for this in the long term? Regardless of the general benefit to the society, have you measured in terms of U.S. dollars how much it would cost per capita, or have you used any other index to quantify in U.S. dollars the cost of this cultural change, that is to say, the no longer using plastic bags to using other alternatives. What is the cost of that in U.S. dollars? Well, I mean, to be poetic, the future cost that uh, this is assessed is on our children. So they can thank their parents and grandparents if we get our act together uh, and thank us for the cost that we save them because they don't have to live in a degraded environment. And the issues of the environment right now, as we are certainly debating our reduction and our dependency on oil, the next big war is going to be on water and water usage. I mean, the water wars that are starting in the United States for fresh and clean water, potable water, this is going to exacerbate and already has continued to globally.